This modeling report will cover the A Model 172 scale kit of the Hansa Jet. The Hansa Jet was developed as a small business and transport jet by Hamburger Flugzeugbau in West Germany. Some other companies were also involved in manufacturing. The design had forward swept wings and wingtip fuel tanks. Accommodation was for up to usually 10 passengers and two general electric engines were installed at rear mounted nacelles. First flight was April 1964. The type was not a big success, with only 47 jets built. The West German Luftwaffe was the largest customer and operated some 20 Hansa jets of which some 10 had an electronic countermeasures role. The wingspan was 1449 meters including wing tanks and the overall length overall 1661 meters. Cruise speed was about 825 km per hour with a range of 2000 km. For many years there was only a rudimentary air model Vacuform 172 kit. But in 2018 an injection molded kit was released by A-Model. It has about 130 parts in soft grey plastic and 7 sprues, a clear sprue with 16 transparent parts, some 24 small etched metal parts and nicely paint masks for the windows and windshield. There are no part numbers indicated. You will need to look at the parts layout drawing. It is noted that the kit was also released by the Amodel sister brand Sovam as an electronic countermeasures jet kit. The same molds have some parts that remain unused. There is no cabin interior in the kit but not a lot is seen anyway, the cockpit though is nicely detailed. Cockpit detailing can be done after fuselage closure. You only get in this kit release decals for one Luftwaffe Hansa jet coated 16 plus 06. The scheme is printed on a separate colored paper decal sheet. On first glance, the decals look good. However, unfortunately the cheat lines have an incorrect too light blue color. I guess that a model looked at the museum aircraft at Berlin Gatto but this is a repainted aircraft. Looking at old photos of operational Hansa jets of the Luftwaffe it is clearly seen that the cheat lines should be a darker blue with the paint code RAL 5010. Therefore I scanned the kit decals with my scanner at high resolution and imported the scan into a graphics program. The lines were set darker blue and I had the print file printed by a third-party decal print shop on clear decal sheet. Assembly of this short run kit takes some clean up work but the fitted is generally good. The cabin windows were set first in each fuselage half before joining the fuselage halves. This will help setting these, thus before closing up the fuselage. The windows do not fit perfectly but good enough. Take care when removing them from the clear sprue to avoid cracks. Glue the windows with thin cement and allow adequate drying. I sanded the outside window area to get a flush result and then repolished the windows clear with polishing paint. The floor aft of the door bulkhead opening was extended a bit. On the inside joint areas, some bits of sprue were set to get stronger joints. The fuselage was now closed up. Ensure a good alignment as these kind of aircraft models are notorious for their top fuselage seams. I now detailed the cockpit from the outside with the small etched metal parts that are provided in this kit. The cockpit interior was painted light gray with blue seat cushions. Seat belts were added from painted tape. A decal provides the instrument panel correctly with a black panel cover. The cockpit glass was installed and luckily has an integrally molded rear section that helps blending it in with the fuselage with some putty and sanding. At the wing the ailerons and flaps were inscribed a bit deeper. The wing lower and upper parts were joined. The engine nacelles fit not too bad with etched metal grills to be glued onto them. This looks a bit strange. But was done anyway. The engine stub wings are a bit vaguely indicated, do not mix these up. I think they should have about 12 degree dihedral relative to the horizontal. Putty was applied while still the major assemblies not joined. Sanding was done. Pay attention to the fuselage spine, ensure a smooth surface and do not damage the clear wind screen. The wing halves were mated with the fuselage. There should be a considerable wing dihedral of about 4 degrees. Ensure symmetry and strong joints for which there is enough glue surface. Some putty was obviously needed at the wing fuselage joints. In front of the windscreen two small stubs were made from card and a few blade antennas on the fuselage belly. Mask off all the windows and the windscreen with the supplied kit masking set, very nice that it is provided by a model. It saves a lot of masking time. After masking, a base coat was airbrushed with Revelock with 75 gray acrylic paint to check for any flaws and to get an even base coat. The model would be finished in a scheme for a Luftwaffe Hansa jet but with the improved sheet lines. I saw many variations on Luftwaffe Hansa jet schemes. Some with bright orange panels will be applied as this would give some extra color to the model. A base matte white paint was airbrushed now with Revelaquo 5 paint. After a good coverage, gloss white paint was airbrushed with my favorite acrylic Gunze Songyo H1 gloss white paint. Masking was done, 
and then follow the lighter gray lower wing and stabilizer areas. I could not check the exact color but settled with Federal Standard 36440. Gunze Songyo H325 acrylic paint was airbrushed. The leading edge is also needed matte black paint, so again a lot of masking with tape and tissue and then airbrushing Revilacqua black paint. The rudder and outside of the wingtip tanks were masked and airbrushed orange with Gunze Songyo H14 orange paint. The model got now the decals, with my new printed corrected darker blue cheat lines. At the engine nacelle stubs, some trimming of the cheat lines was needed. The kit decals are quite thin so slide these off the wetted backing paper. On the doors additional white decals were set which are found on the kit sheet. I had some trouble to align the black wing walkway decals and how these should be set is unclear. Each was cut as there is a wing fence. The smaller bits like the landing gear and antennas were now installed. The exact installment of the main gear is a bit unclear, I drilled the wheel notches a bit larger and set the wheel slightly tilted. The wing leading edge lights are nicely provided in the kit but needed trimming was well to fit. Some aircraft have a long antenna on stacks below the fuselage. Removing these from the sprues proved to be quite difficult, several broke. Some antennas were made thinner, thus from scrap with thin card. The etched metal windscreen wipers in the kit were painted black and installed. I did not use the many etched metal static dischargers but made these from flexible bits of black easy line. Two transparent anti-collision lights were set and got a clear red to me a paint. The two pitot parts to be set on the cockpit top were made a bit smaller. A longer pitot tube was set on the vertical tail fairing made from a metal needle. Finally, a gloss varnish coat was airbrushed with Johnson Future and that completed this model. For more details, please visit my website aircraftinplastic.com. On this website more than 600 aircraft models are presented.